people have to understand that God has changed the way he moves. Jo mieronia yako ni ubado lo hokisa men tia beyo keria kinawa. It doesn't mean that he's not God. Sanyuri no en poberba. No, he has is just changing the mood. Eno lo hoka yo men tia be beya keria kinawa. And we can either change or die. Wandong kerning o miri lo here ka pe miri ta. There was a time it was not possible. To have 7000 people attending a weekly service in Uganda. Maybe in Uganda can carry you and me be in Lagos, me chapi to chapi tutumia biro. But it's happening now. Amando kie. By the grace of God. Kere kisha ba. Hallelujah. There was a time it was not anywhere. Ono peti kanorwa. Go to Kenya and look for it. Pay what Kenya kong? Go to Rwanda and Tanzania and see. What Rwanda? What Tanzania? Pay nwongo. Of course, the Lord is doing something with us. God is doing in Uganda. Uganda. If I can tell you how many ministries we are we, we are overseeing it can humble you. Kona kopi dul ti chapa pata me jayo ya ibot baba mi mole mate. But I came to speak to that minister who has a dream. Enta biro me lokera ti chuba me chekere le. I came to speak to somebody who still has hope. That God is going to move in his generation. It doesn't matter how old you are. Or what you know. What matters is your yieldedness to be used by God. We are simply saying we are not going to limit God by what we have seen. We're simply saying that there is more. And we want to see it before we die. So Father, we thank you. That the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. Even as you minister to us spirits. Our ministries are going to change. In Jesus name. Yes, Somebody say amen. amen. So today and tomorrow I'm going to just be handling the issue of how to grow ministry. And, and I'm going to share many things that will open our eyes as ministers to know why we are struggling in ministry. Recently a certain research was done. And uh, when it was given in the world, somebody sent me that research. Maybe some of you have even heard of this research. But this research is going to give us the facts of what really is, is in the church of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. So researchers did research on two churches in the world. Or ministries in the world. And this was discovered. China, China, the country, is the world's leading economic power. And the church of Jesus Christ is not a recognized entity in the world's strongest economic power. We have three fellowships in China. We actually have fellowships across China. We have three US, we have four. Malaysia we have uh, where else? UK we have, Ireland we have, Rwanda we have, Kenya we have. So God is doing great things. Three years. <laughs> Somebody clap for Jesus. So I was saying, China, the biggest economic superpower in the world. They don't register churches. They don't recognize churches. Even the fellowships there are underground. 
Today, economists have proved that Finland has the most stable economy in the world. China is leading. Finland is stable. And on record, there are less than 20 churches in Finland. Less than 20. Switzerland has the second most stable economy in the world. And it has less than 30 churches in the country. Denmark is the third most stable economy in the world. They have 23 churches. Come to Africa. Praise God. In the city of Yaoundé alone, who knows where Yaoundé is? Yaoundé, Tikwene. Cameroon. Cameroon. They have 4,000 churches in Yaoundé alone. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. In Kinshasa. In Kinshasa. Alone. DRC. DRC. They have. 7,000 churches. In Lagos, Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria, they have 10,000 churches. Praise the Lord. Now, the question is, if Kinshasa has 7,000 churches, and Switzerland has 23, and that is where health is, that is where education is. That is where improved economies are. Because economies mean people have a better, uh, a better uh, state of living. They have a higher uh, mortality. Uh, they, high, they have a, a higher uh, rate, the, the rate of life. Yes. Yes, life expectancy is high. Uh, it's higher than the Kinshasa, which has 10,000 10, churches. Uganda is the second most youngest nation in the world after Niger. Because our old die quickly. There are very few people who are above the age of 16 in Uganda. Where we say revival, power, glory, God is here. Poverty is in Kinshasa. Sickness is in Kinshasa. Uh, corruption is in Kinshasa. Death is in Kinshasa. War is in Kinshasa. Everything you know is in Kinshasa. Where well, there are 7,000 churches. The question is, is it the numbers of churches? Or the quality of Christianity. The Bible tells us that righteousness exalts a nation. Why don't we have more righteousness? In the third world countries. Uganda is more corrupt than Switzerland where there is no God. Go in Somalia. Somalia. Somalia, you go on the internet and Google churches in Somalia. They will put zero. not. They, are not, they, they don't recognize churches in Somalia. Go to Kismayo, go to Mogadishu. There is nothing. What Mogadishu? But people walk with money during day. Like they're holding shoes. They're not stealing them. Do you understand what I'm saying? You so go in our government and see the corruption levels. And the people arrested every day have Christian names. 
That means the church had an opportunity to preach to them the gospel at a certain time. But this gospel did not have effect. That's why again I'm asking, is it about the buildings? Is it about the churches? Or it's about the quality of Christianity? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Today what we have is not the gospel. Today what we have is tradition. Paradoxes. And many of these things have passed. For the revelation of Jesus Christ and the ministry of Christ. And the word of God has become void of its power. Because of our tradition. The things we think are revelation. They are the same things that are killing the church. I saw Jesus at the age of eight. I passed the church many years ago. And for three years, that church only had close to 50 members. I want you to note, I want you to note that almost 80% of the world's churches are below 90 members. Uh, 80%. All of these are facts you can find on the internet. Yet we have the mandate. Send us in the world. You told us to occupy until you come. Then there are people who have also coined another doctrine. Me, God called me for few. If he called you for few, close the church when you get that number. Close the church. If God called you for 20, pass the 20 and close the church. But when they come more, they say, now we are going to break now. Why, why are you breaking? You said God called you for few. But where is it in scripture? No, no, no. The Bible says it saves by many or by few. But he didn't say that he has called us for few. No, he has called us to occupy to occupy until he comes. That means your ministry is going to grow until you die. And after you, the one who will come after, will take over and it will grow until he lives. From glory to glory, from one level to another level, in Jesus' mighty name, somebody say amen. That's my story. That is what I believe. Praise the Lord Jesus. The church of Jesus Christ is, it looks, not is, but it looks powerful. Another survey was done. And the Roman Catholic Church has enough money to run its programs across the world for the next 300 years without any giving. That's how rich the Vatican is. That's how rich Vatican is. Pentecostals were the biggest collectors of money. The biggest collectors on money. God can speak in Psalm 77. He can speak in Psalm 50. He can speak in Psalm 90 for 90,000, 9 million, 90 million. He can speak in Genesis 2 for 2 million, 2 billion. Translate. But we don't even have a basic order to build a system that can build the church of Jesus. Allah is in, is in, is in a rooftops and, and brick buildings. Roman Catholics are building buildings, hospitals, schools, 
Because these are the two fundamental corners of ministry. If you can give men the spiritual build hospitals to give them health build schools to give them an education and create income generating activities for their children to eat food they cannot leave they cannot leave the biggest move, Christian movement in Uganda is the Roman Catholic faith in Uganda, they are registered close to, to, to about, is it 18 million? In Uganda, million No, 14, I think, 14 million. million Anglicans are 8 million. Okay, it again, a million the recent survey in Uganda, the recent uh, population survey in Uganda, they counted all born again Pentecostals who registered as Pentecostals. And we were 3.8. million But we, we screamed the most. And the one the law. We shout the most. One of the law. Do you understand what I'm saying? There is something we have to learn. We are losing something here. Why do we scream the most? No, me one read the law. Yet we are the least. And the one that not law. Not all Anglicans are, are religious. Some have a relationship with God. Not all Roman Catholics are religious. Some have a relationship with God. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, actually seen, I'm starting to see more religion in the tongue speaking Pentecostals. And tradition. You understand what I'm saying? If you care for the church, you, you have to have a burden for the gospel. Somebody shout hallelujah. Something has to change. When I come up and we are 7,000, the people who fight me are Pentecostal. Born again believers who speak in tongues. Ah, you is cult. How can he grow like that? No, 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 no. Yes, how, how can he grow like that? How am I supposed to grow? What has the Bible told me? What has the Bible told me? Somebody shout hallelujah. No, I simply discovered the way. I've had an opportunity to travel the world. I preach in pastors' conferences of thousands and thousands. In the strongest nation on the face of the earth. I've preached with the biggest men you know on the face of the earth. And I've realized African men simply don't know how to build ministry. We don't. You can encourage yourself in the Lord. You can say they are not talking about you. You can inflate your pride and say, who is this young man speaking? African men, we don't know how to build ministry. Yet we know how to pray. We know how to demonstrate power. We know how to see in the spirit. But we just don't know how to build ministry. What is wrong with a black man? What is wrong with our people? Wars are with black men. Contentions are with the black people. Oh, this is envies with black men. Divisions are with our color. Competition is with our color. Jealousies is with our color. Rumors and gossip is with our color. Hatred is with our color. Disunity is with our color. Poverty is with our color. Pastors can't even take their children to school. People are still typing over Kedo and, and eggs. There's something wrong. Do not be right. 
And we have served God for years. Wano we have yuba, served yuba. God. Wano yuba. God knows we love him. Uba, God knows we gave him our life. Uba, God God knows we want to live for him. He uba, knows it. But there's something wrong with black people. There's something wrong with black people. And that has to change in the mighty name of Jesus. It has to change with everybody who is alive in this room. We still have an opportunity to change. Praise God, we still have an opportunity to change. Pastors, ministers, we can change this. The brothers in Nigeria have showed us how. They were depots and the boys, they've done great work. Although oh, still Pentecostalism there is still just, eight, uh, they think, 18%. Uh, Pentecostalism in Nigeria. In love Nigeria. So we also have a whole, a whole work to do. Take a teacher to you. Do you understand? Yeah. You, I've, I've been in America. You meet men who are pastoring 20,000, 10,000. Come close to them. I've been in America. No, to me Listen to the wisdom on their lips. When you come back to Uganda, you understand why we can't build ministry. So I made myself a student of those men. I started to study. What, what is wrong with us? And every time I could change some of these things, my ministry started to change. There are principles that have outlived you. They are older than you. They are called ancient wisdom. You found them here and they will outlive you. Paul says that we which strive for mastery, we must strive lawfully. There are laws that govern mastery. And mediocrity disregards principles. Mediocrity disregards the laws of the spirit. If you're a mediocre minister, you despise the principles of the spirit. That's why he says the carnal mind cannot receive neither design the things of the spirit. That's why the Bible says the carnal mind is the enmity to the spirit. And the Bible says, and he's not subject to the law of God. Carnality cannot subject itself to the principles of the spirit. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God. So it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Carnal men cannot subject themselves to the laws of the spirit. They think you can build a ministry without without responding to the laws of the spirit. No. The principles of the ministry of God are very clear. You either obey them and build a ministry that lasts. Or you stay in carnal mediocrity and build a ministry that is predictable. But I refuse to be predictable in the mighty name of Jesus. I said I refuse to be predictable in the mighty name of Jesus. If the Lord can show us how. If the Lord can show us how. We will do. We will do. One thing more. I want you to understand that the East African revival, for those of you who know it or have read about it, Edward George Church. Edward George Church. He was a missionary. Treating people in Rwanda. In a place called Gahini. Came from Rwanda. Came to Uganda. Made an Irish nurse called 
Mabel Enzo. And they started to discuss about the conservativeness and coldness in the church. The church had existed before. But it lacked a certain power. It lacked a certain effect. And when the church loses power, it becomes political. Religious leaders start looking for politicians instead of politicians looking for them. Praise the Lord Jesus. Kings will look for prophets. Not prophets to look for kings. And that has come back. They will look for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because they will find that we have the answer. And they will work with the church. I met a man in the United States. Who is a spiritual mentor to Trump. I preached there in Arizona recently. This man calls and says, what should I do? And they pray. I said, God, this is what we need. They need to trust the church again. They need to trust the church again. They need to trust us again. We, we might have made mistakes. But we can correct them. They still hope. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. A nation has to bow to God. Being a minister must be the most beautiful thing in the world. Our children should look at us and want to serve God. I know ministers whose children don't want to even look at God. Because they, they see reproach on the men who served God. You understand what I'm saying? I know a child who told the father, I don't want to serve your God. Because we have put us through everything that we have gone through over the years. You mean the demons, you mean the demons are stronger in Africa? Satan is everywhere. But you have woken up every night, midnight hour, 3 a.m. You've gone on the prayer mountain. You've done everything, but the devil is still destroying no, 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 that is not supposed to be us. So, if the East African revival began from more of an evangelistic and an evangelical doctrine, we were taught Jesus, who are taught the infill of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of water, the consecration of the saints, to walk by faith and in righteousness. But we were not taught how to build ministry. We were not taught. Even some of the people who have gone to Bible school, many of them, when you talk of the principles, they are just prepared to be ministers. But they are not taught how to build ministry. So we have very fine ministers, but very frustrated ministry. Praise the Lord. Amen. God has put a mandate on Uganda to pastor the world. Oh, bad. How many of you know that? <laughs> and, 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 and the Lord has spoken to us a couple of years ago that Uganda is going to be the center. People are going to come. Soon we are going to be on some, one of the biggest... Oh, my goodness. Let me... Let me, let me, let me let me preserve you. Some of you will just hear the news. When you hear, just say amen. Praise God. Amen. But it's humbling what God wants to do. With Ugandans. The people of our color and blood. Sometimes when I stand in these pulpits, I say, God, I, I, I have something on our life. Tell somebody, there's something on our life. Something special, you guys. Praise God. So, 
How do we build ministry? We must understand that if you want mastery, understand the laws of the spirit. Today and tomorrow I'll touch some. But I'm not sure I'll finish them this time. But if the Lord so will, I will touch more the next time when Bishop Tom feels it in his heart. Praise God. Amen. We want to separate tradition from revelation. The teaching of Jesus Christ from the politics of men. When you look at the separation of Paul, because God wanted to build the New Testament through this man, the foundation, it says as a master builder, master builder. Paul uses the word master builder. He says, according to the grace which is given unto me, as a wise master builder. He said, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereof. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereof. Let's learn from the master builder. Somebody shout hallelujah. Learn from the master builder. This man laid the foundation. No man can come now and say, I am laying the foundation. No. That is Paul's part. You can only build upon, you can't take Paul's part out of the history. Many books were written in the Bible. But there is a reason why that man has almost three quarters of the New Testament under his name. Paul knew something. In Galatians, Paul tells you that I satisfied to you that the gospel I'm preaching was not after man. For neither received it eye of man, but was taught it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he says, neither went I to Jerusalem to them which were apostles. Verse 17, go to verse 17. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. God separated Paul into Arabia. Taught him the revelation. And he came as a wise master builder. Three years. Three years. Now, does that mean Paul is saying we shouldn't learn from men? No. The Bible is clear on how eunuchs are made. Bible In fact, the Aramaic for eunuch is believer. Let me Aramaic obey the joy. So, believers are made because one they are born in their mother's womb. Ulong kore gino yeho ge pieni ni mara chel gino yeho ge pieni. There is an anointing you had when you were formed in your mother's womb. Ikarre pore uyadi toti ti nuira me gino bino kni. There is something that will add on you when you meet a certain man of God. And there is also something that will add on you when you separate yourself with God personally. Those are the three ways the anointing comes on us. Are you following me? But that said, Paul is not saying that we should not learn from those ahead of us. No. Angel, no, no. The problem in Jerusalem, the most predominant teaching was Judaism. Judaism. And the foundation of Judaism was tradition. Not revelation. So Paul had to disconnect from tradition. Paul don't connect to revelation. And build the church of, or the foundation. No man seeking for mastery. The laws and the principles of mastery. One of which was the message. And I'm going to touch on that tomorrow. I'm going to touch on the issue of the message. 
if you are raising him, why isn't he drawing men? Hello? Amen. He said, if, you, if I be lifted from the earth, I shall draw men to myself. If you're lifting up Jesus, why aren't men being drawn unto him? Why is your ministry struggling? Look at how Jesus did it. Look at how Paul did it. Look at how Peter did it. Why is it that when they lift Christ, he draws men to himself? Why is it that every big church is wrong? It's cult. Every true no right. church is the one which is which is which is not growing. One time a preacher said, uh, when you me. speak things people want to hear. They will feel. When you speak the truth, they will go away. Even me, I used to speak it many years ago before I understood the truth. I pastored the church for three years. Fifty members. No more, no less. The ones inside are pregnant. <laughs> Don't even tell me. They just age by number and then they just gain weight. The same demon you chased three years ago is the same demon on the woman. They say, Do I have witnesses here? I, 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 I say, God, there has to be something wrong with me. I, I didn't blame the system. Even me, even me, I used to say, when, when you preach the truth, people go. The Holy Spirit told me that Jesus was a liar. Because 5,000 men followed him even without food. He must have been a master deceiver. No, that is not true. Praise God. Amen. Some of us even speak those things in envy. But we don't speak them in true conviction. The, the gospel is life. Men can't run away from life. No, maybe we are giving them what is not life. I'll touch it tomorrow. I'll go extensively in it tomorrow. But today let me speak of one principle. Man. Because of time. Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I communicating? Am I communicating something? We are building ministry that are trying to reap what we have not sown. The Bible says, be not deceived. It is mockery unto God for you to reap what you don't sow. The Bible says you shall sow. Bible You shall reap. What you sow. For whatsoever a man sows, shall he reap. If you ignore that principle, you're mocking God. It's mockery to God. As long as the earth remains, here is the principle. The Lord. Feed and harvest. And have it. And have it. Those are some of the things that will never cease. Until the end of eternity, the seed principle will work. And the harvest principle will work. Those are principles that will never change. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Ministers, your ministry is as a result of what you sow. And I'm not talking about money here. Uh -uh, because people have spoiled that word to money. No, 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 no. In, interestingly, the parable in Luke 8, 11 is the seed is the word. Praise God. But let's touch on the issue of reaping and sowing. Because for as long as the earth remains, feed and harvest. Now, he told you, the harvest is plenty. 
that the laborers are few. And so it's Christian enough. Some of us because we don't understand the seed. Yo que no tiene one pon yang copy con corri. We don't have a harvest. One pon pique de cachua because traditions have replaced. Tiente cuaro leo kakani. Un leo kakani yapo. I'll give you an example. A mi apo. People pray. Yo lego. God. Yes. Let us pray for the salvation. Un lek pilare. Of people in Lira. Yo Lira. God save Lira. Oba o Lira. Bring salvation. Que lare. God It's nowhere in scripture. Where God has asked you to pray for the lost. It's not in scripture. You do it, I've done it, but it's not in scripture. No. Scripture says, pray that the Lord of the harvest, this is the prayer, will send laborers. Don't Some of you you're praying for the salvation of your family. God has not called you to pray for his harvest. He loves them more than you love them. And they are already harvest. Don't pray for them like they are planting. They are already harvest. You understand what I'm saying? For us everyone in my family God said except my father. Yo dije pues cuando se vi la was Roman Catholic deadly Mary He loved this rosary and Uno marujari mere But the day I changed my prayer to God send the laborers Esto ni la mano lo laborers Ako venio ba Cuz the Lord just told me the problem was not his heart No, he's the God of all flesh The Lord just told me He just needs the right Laborer. Right laborer. I started praying for the right laborer. One day I was preaching. And my own father came and received Jesus on my pulpit. It was the happiest day of my life last year. After service he came and said, I was imagining going to hell when all of you are in heaven. <laughs> no, 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 I had to change it. <laughs> But I want you to look at the world as a harvest. Don't look at the world as a work. Look at the world like God has worked in every month. When I'm, pre- when I'm in Fanero, I convince myself that God has already convinced men to come. And Oh! God bring people. Bring people. Bring people. No. The issue is, I have to work on me as a laborer. To be the right laborer. The business is not the numbers. The problem is not the numbers. The problem is the laborer. Am I a laborer suitable for the Lord's people? Because he can give you a million you and you spoil them. He can give you a million people and you spoil them. Ramo mi yo million a quien te pa lo jana para tu sur. He can give you two million and you destroy. Ramo mi million a rio de te pa lo jana para. For me my question is am I the right? A pediri ana na ya pero. The more I understand how to sow to the spirit. And yang kire me choye ko ri chunda. I don't worry about the number. And ta paro we la jo. There are men if God just gives them 300 members. Si jo ke na me ko na ba mi ke jo mi a de ke ken. We are in trouble. No one are people ho. You're going to get 17 bodyguards. You know go boy ka ta para biro. You going to start working a certain way. You work don ki toro ko na me la ko sai. They don't hold your bible you don't. Bible dang mo ka ma ha. If they don't do this you don't I told you I've met men. You go to Singapore. Jesus Prince has 40,000 members. Jesus Prince there you to to me appear and the country of 4.5 million. He jo kana me jo to ye to me and me abi. And they are humble men. Million and when it points a bit. Walking in the church lobby very normal. Then they no ka pia what they can meet up come go and come to Uganda. Uganda kono. You find a man of God of 10 me. Ai ai. No at the bar mo to carry you to me a pa million a pa. Why are you there? When the Lord was consecrating me. One time I was in a service, a man said, Bring money, you're not the ones who anointed me. Bring. Bring. 
You're not the ones who anointed me. Bring more. He had taken offering. That evening he had already taken offering. After taking the offering. He just said, by the way, I'm anointed. Bring money. He remembered that he was anointed. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. Praise God. So traditions, revelation. So I was saying, you reap what you sow. Pastors, am I, am I communicating? Thank you. You reap what you sow. And, for example, why do you want people to job? To tithe to you, Pastor Bishop. When you're not a tither. Why are we even discussing that? You tell me. You want people to bring to you. But you're not a tither. How are you going to release the finances of a ministry? As long as I know a total it has been tithing. Oh no, I started Fanero tithing. Three years we are already in billions. I will not even tell you how much. We've already paid off a facility of about uh, close to 2.2 billion. We are going to finish the money very soon. We are not poor. <laughs> we are not poor. We received now in the billions, already in the third year. But why do you expect to tithe to you when you do not tithe pasta? What are we even building? But it doesn't begin from you tithing. There is a higher principle. Who is your father? Men of God, who is your father? I'm not talking about a political name. I'm not talking about someone you say, ah, that is my spiritual father. i a man you have a relationship with personally. Or a relationship with spiritually, if not physically. You might not be able to see him, but do you have a relationship with him spiritually? Do you communicate spiritually? We, Uganda is one of the most often nations I know. We have old men who are not fathers. Not all. Some old men who are not fathers. And they took on the responsibilities. And, and they tore their sons. Many ministers here have wounds on their hearts. You have wounds and scars. You gave your life to a man and he used you like Jacob was used by Laban. The day you disconnected, you made up your mind never to sit under a certain man. Let me correct you. You were just unfortunate to sit under a wrong man. But don't throw out the principle of submission. You have fathers in the faith. You understand what I'm saying? Today our ministers, everyone does what they want. And they say, ah, for me the Holy Spirit is. Listen, he works through men. He works through a, a divine oracle. Praise God. He works through individuals. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But look at the generations that are coming through. Some of you remember the days when a man called Obili Eboa came in Uganda. Tell me one person above 60 and they've been in the faith for 30 years and they never saw Billy. 
So Biri Eboa was like uh, after the, the, the first movement. You remember the first movement of the of the uh, East African revival? Men were filled with the Holy Spirit, preaching against all these wrong things. Some also the awakened ones came. The Oxford group came. The the Lutherans came. The Methodists. Came, the charismatic scam, the CC, CC, the CHC, uh, no, no, the C, triple C came, uh, CC came, all of you see? You want to do it, 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 you want Many of the fathers of our faith sat under that man. Many, if not all. He was the leading prophet then. And healing machine. Some of you remember the story. He died. Then they went to bury him. Then he was buried in a cultural regalia. When he returned, our fathers told us the man was a sorcerer. You remember? Bishop, I think you know the story. You remember? When Obiri died, many fathers disconnected. Many of our fathers were never fathered again. But we don't blame them. No, they were disappointed. And who was available to handle such anointed men? You get my point? Some like the Robert Kayanjas went out to TLO's bone. Robert Kayanja were both TLO's bone. Some, uh, you know, like Watoto Wanda, uh, what, Evangelical? Is it? Was it? PAG, I think. That's why I think they used to. Evangelical PAG. But many of them disconnected. And in the early 90s, the fastest growing ministries were either Miracle Center or Watoto. Look at men who were raised in their days without spiritual authority. Many of them were hit. Many of them were hit. Many of them Many of them were hit. Many of them were hit. Many of them were and they've never recovered, but they are gifted. Because we don't even have a safe haven to come and tell a man of God, you know, man of God, I'm burning. You tell him he's going to go on radio tomorrow morning. And broadcast pastors who are burning. The next thing you know, he has told his wife, his wife has told the PA, the PA has told his, his other friend, and then. Translate. Before you know that, you don't trust men of God anymore. You say, if I burn, I burn. Let me burn alone. God, you, you understand. You, you will not judge me. Because the man will have issues. Personal issues. And the Lord will still use him. You understand? And he will start going to God as his refuge. But he has floated the priest. He needed a covering over his life. A covering he can trust. Someone who can stand with him and tell him I'm praying with you until this thing goes through. I'm not even going to tell my wife. You look at Timothy. He's a third generation of anointing. You see the faith in his grandmother. Lois. It goes in his mother, Eunice. It goes in Timothy. That's how the anointing transcends from essence to day. But how do we even carry third, fourth dimension anointings when we can't even serve enough to be commissioned? We live ministry, ministry unskilled and inexperienced. We go before our time prodigal because we are sad and hurt. And we start ministries 
when we don't even know how to be father to father because we don't even know one they move father that's don't know how to father so we can't be father one carol don't be papa and put down but i'm not gonna me a better power but you can be anyone you come with a no papa what that yeah the men were fighting me were two times my age People who could even call me on phone and say come tomorrow and I come running. But they can't call me because they fear me to be right. Who have problems? 
I'll come to that later. Another example. David. Dahuri. He's raised by Jesse. Jesse and I you know the story. The boy kills lions. A woman in the he kills bears. Never lay move. And he can't tell his father. It is a sad experience. When a biological son cannot share his experience with his physical father. But Papa Pastor's sons are lost. Minister's children are lost. Because we didn't even see the mantle in their lives. The first man to realize the mantle also realizes it by mistake. He did not send the warrior to war. He sent him to take food. To those he presumed to be warriors. But when they were poor in the anointing, he called all of them who looked like kings. Except David. Now the boy faces a man. A woman tells him I'm facing this Philistine. Kills the Philistine. Now, the second man who comes like a father. He also comes to him because he has an advantage. He kills his enemy. And the Bible tells us, and so love David. Which love? Which love can change? The day you hear that the boy killed 10,000 and you killed a thousand. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Where is love? When I can only kill a thousand. And the day I kill ten thousand. The Bible says the contents of soul change. And he wanted to kill David that day. If he is the son-in-law. He married his only daughter. He would rather let Michael be a widow than dwell next to a boy whose success is going up. And David, you also have to learn that demons will hit the man at night and you'll have to cut the half and pray for him because the demons are disturbing him. And the next day you're not going to go boasting. That I am the one who kills the demons of my father. No. Your father's witness is your promotion. That is why Noah cast this boy. Because when he was dressed, this one took time to laugh at his weakness. Not true spirit of sonship laughs at the weakness of the father. And it was the weakness of the father. The day you see your father's weakness, that is the day you will know that you're promoted. How you respond to him when he's weak. Defines how men will respond to you in your weakness. And if a man's weakness is safe, is not safe with you. Neither is his strength. If a man's weakness is not safe with you, neither is his strength. This is to fathers, man and it is to sons alike. When he killed a thousand and killed ten thousand, is he the one who came shouting? Funny women. Mon. Funny women. Monogo. Monata. No son boasts of his victory under his father. I said no son boasts of his victory under his father. That's the man after God's own heart. Some people already compare themselves. You know, Bishop Revelation has rebuked. You will die no more. You will die no more. It's not your business to correct your father. It's your business to cover him when he's weak. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is a man after God's own heart. 
that even when the father sought to slay him and he cut a lace of his clothes he was convicted the point where he brought his neck and told him kill me this is the same man who was anointed in 1 Samuel 16 the man and king while he carried the anointing of the king Saul still carried the anointing of the office and there are patterns to inherit the office you never heard of David one day boasting that I'm the anointed king of Israel while Saul was on his feet he served the anointed some of you you're receiving the reward of associate pastors not the inheritance of sons. Are you an associate in the ministry? You shall get the reward of an associate. But sons seek for an inheritance. We don't ask for pay. We have people, me, they don't give me 10,000. I'll not play the piano. Go and die. Then they start pleading with the sister to come and lead worship. Because without her voice, the service doesn't flow. Stay with your voice, madam. This is an inheritance issue. It's an inheritance issue. So, David becomes a father too. Saul never taught him. Jesse never taught him. When Amnon raped Tamar, he doesn't know what to do. When Absalom wants to be king, he doesn't know what to do. Adonai anoints himself. Adonai He doesn't know what to do. He just anoints Solomon. And leaves the battle. Solomon also becomes king. Solomon There are things he doesn't know how to do. He marries many wives. Splits Israel up to today. The wisest man split Israel. Up to today. Israel is split. Because of the wisest son. Who also wasn't told to be a father. They give him the instruments to build the temple. He builds it so magnificent. But he doesn't know how to worship the God of his father. He was taught to war. He was given the kingship wisdom. But he did not know the power of the altar. He was only tender and beloved when he was younger. When he grew up, the other one stayed sons and he stayed the servant. You start to realize that as David grows older, Solomon becomes a distant. Yet he was supposed to keep him closest because he was making a king. But while he was still a young boy in Proverbs 4, I think 5, he, he, he loved him. He taught him wisdom. So Solomon starts to lead the nation only by the wisdom his father taught him when he was little. But who talked to him when he was growing up? Who told him to stay away from women? Who how? So when he becomes king, it's the first thing he goes to. You blame Solomon when David didn't know how. You can't blame David when Saul didn't teach him. You can't blame Saul when Jesse did not teach David at all. This problem is bigger than the Solomon right now with 700 wives and concubines. Bigger! There were things that even the father didn't teach him. 
So we are living to judge even those who are not taught. Where is hope for a minister? In this nation, if they fall. Where is Roman Catholic fathers rape boys and they are restored. Fathers rape little boys. They get them out of the system. Teach them. Restore them. And restitute them back to their house. Today if they even just hear rumor that they found you with a woman in Lira Hotel. Because again, all those around you want to believe it's true. And even if it's true, there is no hope for you. Because everyone is praying for you to die. Because that's how their churches will grow. Because they assume when you fall, your members will leave you and then go to their churches. That's the only way they know how to build me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The harvest is still plenty. A father man of God does not need to fall for you to build a ministry. The Bible says, Cursed be those which build on wickedness. For the light of the wicked shall be dimmed surely. You will fall and your church will not grow either. Because the state of your heart is not right towards God. Am I making some sense? <laughs> These things seem obvious, Bishop, but they are not. You ask how many pastors here are truly submitted. So how did you deal with Ezekiel? Uh, what is it? Ezekiel 43? How did you deal with that? Let me read for your scripture. For example, let, let me read. Um, are you learning something, say? Huh? Give me a second. Let me look for this scripture. Let me look for this scripture. Yeah. I think it's Ezekiel 44, 30. Yeah? Read it. It says, and the first of all first fruit. Of all things. And every oblation of every sort of oblation. Shall be the priest. The English KJV says priest, singular. Uh, let me King James Version see a company, me a lamb dog. A lamb dog. Who is your priest? A lamb dog, you better not. So if you don't have a priest, how do you give first fruit? And if you have not given first fruit, we cut. And if you have not given first fruit, why should you ask for first fruit? Why do you want to reap where you didn't sow? Because you see, that's how the fathering thing works. Also. The first fruit goes upward. The tithes go upward. That he may cause the blessing to settle in your house. He didn't say a blessing. He said the blessing. It is the blessing of God that maketh rich. And addeth no sorrow. That's why we are poor. Because we don't have the blessing from our priest. That's why you can't say amen. Even like <laughs> amen. No, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Am I making sense? Yeah. So yeah. if you how, do, leave this leave this thing of 
saying political this is my spiritual father we cop me we be we be me come nyam papa me chunyi ona wara sub t fast fruit every year me a corner we call we cut and ties every month tell me you a tela pa we do you release the finances of your ministry igo nyu je na me do kichi you might ask me where is the tie written i robo panyo ni ucho ya tela pa ko ene numbers book a well numbers book a well praise the lord parole roi read chapter 18 kwan well tu era para boro verses 26 yeng pierre rio we are here we shall go up to and also we shall read verse 26 and verse 28 read 26 speak to you the levites the pastors koni a low board lock board to lady tell them when you take tithes of the children of israel koni kai ter wa chela par no ter ta ta in church wa ro gama chela par kanisa which have given you know me from your inheritance ya ai kina me leo he says you shall offer up a heap of bread e koni biro mi o koni faro malo motta mo yiru for it pn which is the ten part of that tithe a me opera chela par me yaya chela par me gamo for example if you collect 200000 for letter work kai ni ga a for kai ni gamo la har get the 20000 off when to do me up here yoko ye as the levite of that household i tell you a lady on your to buy your account and forward it to your priest go to verses 28 you are like a bottle of doggy thank you very much offer the heave offering unto the lord he be no me you must do in the body all your tight na jena par ko ye jena par me ka the children of god i make them to you but and you shall give there of the lord heave offering he be no me you bottle of must do in the body bottle of doggy that will release your finances may we leave me take going there is someone who has had me thing at all when you near and they are not going to do it i may pay with him madam i know some people i know i know you okay when you enter pay with you who is your priest a mommy a lamb dog you better not Hebrews 13:17 He pray me a para de ha para biro Obey them that rule over you in the spirit Let the wind but your men you could in your low with you Submit yourselves Me e wuru pa te la ji for they watch for your soul Bien gen ni ko wu as they that must give account I can not give me a mia da that they might do it with joy Wek yo tim ke de yom chui and not with grief Better one for that is unprofitable for you. Bien de mono no pay de no mo gino ra pay ya ya. Some pastors are not profiting. Ti dio ke no koro ke na pete anu na pete anya. Grieve your spiritual sorry. Bien no na pa me loy chuny ni wa o ye. How do you grieve them? Ya mani wa o ye yo rama. Either by not listening and submitting. Nyo pay wi ni dang pay mi e te lo ji. Or by not recognizing an authority over your head. Unyo yin pay waro nga ta mo ba o ker me telli. That's why the ad the amplified bible says continually acknowledge. Elo me o amplified bible ko ni. Authority over you continue. Do it better me ti ni an ko ni waro ter me ti. Continually recognize authority over you. Me ta me ra ker ni waro o ma ta mo ker ni. Just boldly tell people my spiritual father is so and so. A ka ri ka ni ta ko bi pa ko me ti. If you find a problem with me go and report to me to me don't report me to anyone i will not listen kai no pa o kere wore ko pot pa ba me chun cha pa report me to that man if he calls me i'll go kai no luwa ara te wot these people know that the man who who i sit under even if he calls me right now and tells me get on the first flight yo me ara tell ki ngere beri ah nga ta bobo pa ba me chun ko ko cha wa ni to ni dege to wait no da ra bo ko ni ya get on the first like i don't you come dey me ko kwa nga ya that thing was bare they saw me serve a man for 10 years some no on la ti ya mi ruba mo ka pa i didn't begin by preaching that ya o ke ti ti ji i flushed compounds and washed no toilet you kala lu wa o we washed cars and went shopping in the lu wa sa o te wa do we lu jami our generation they just want power they get up and then they come up you want to pay ho e kai te ya e wo e pinyi te do ka person you ask this bishop what they've done they ask them bishop what they are doing they ask them they Some of them probably were 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 these little boys that were standing on the shop. That is how the anointing flows. Learn to serve somebody. And as long as I live, I will, I will serve a certain man. I will serve them. 
When you give your life to men, when you trust your life with a man, men will give you their lives. Some of you, you're reaping what you sowed. The rebellion in your house was your rebellion a few years ago. Now everyone who's a success is a cult. You're the right one who is rebellious. How can someone even question what is happening here right now? <laughs> How can a born again Christian even question what is happening here right now? Is it of God? No, it's not of God. You understand what I'm saying? Are the things I'm speaking of God? I'm almost finishing because of time. And I want us to go into a, a prayer. Praise God. Praise God. I, I feel like praying. Hallelujah. But do you understand what I'm saying? Who are you submitted to? Do you serve? Do you serve? Who do you give your heave and tithe? Who can command you and you listen? No, no, some of you, you are your own men of God. Look at all the ministers who don't have mentors or spiritual fathers. Look at all of them. At one point, they knock. At one point. You go back in your ears and remember people who don't listen to anyone. They know. They always make mistakes. Americans understand these things in stress. When I went to America, I was shocked. These guys, you think they don't. But when you get to their city, you'll be shocked. The biggest pastor in the world, Eno Kadeboyo, up to today still kneels before Kenneth Copeland. Oh, you're dead for sorry. He kneels before Kenneth Copeland. Adeboyo kneels before your depot. Yet he has a million members. Children start with 500,000. When they call altar calls, they need to put people in cars. When they make altar calls, they put people in cars to take them to the altar because the church is so big. Then you find the pastor with 200 members. Very dangerous. <laughs> very, very dangerous. I, I want to finish. Duncan William tells a story. William, I don't even know Duncan William, Bishop Duncan William. Of Your dear man, Bishop Duncan William. He was a son of the late Benson in Dahusa. This is a story he told openly, so I can share it openly. The Dahusa used to look up to T.L. Osborne many times. The Osborne. So one time, T.L. Osborne tells in Dahosa, I want to do a meeting in Ghana. Now this story was told by Duncan William. He said, I want to do a meeting in Ghana. Now Duncan William is big. Duncan William did that. I've been to Ghana. And I work Ghana. The man's church is here. American. They even built a bank. bank As a ministry, they built a bank. <laughs> bank. The money became too much and they built a bank. <laughs> savings thing and then they use it to give people money. It's very interesting. <laughs> These guys have seen money. <laughs> so, T.L. Osborne, Osborne tells Idahosa, make me a meeting. Make me a meeting. Idahosa calls Idahosa Duncan, tells him, put a meeting for T.L. This is an instruction of the Father. You don't even tell him you don't have money. You just do a meeting. Do you know what happened? 
My father is coming I think this year again to visit Uganda. Papa tia bino laki mwahani mepi Uganda. I told them I'm going to offer everything. You, you offer what you want but me anything in my name is available. You know why? Because I'm coming. Yana niya yana niya tia ti. My father. Atia ti ti papa. I can't keep anything in my room when I'm coming. Yana muka no gino ri kika na me papa tia. Pea gwa ko. That day I'm going to put on t-shirts and jeans and also serve the whole day. I'll put t-shirts and jeans and that. I'll not be sitting in front with the preachers. No. I'm preparing you. I'll go in the back and serve. I don't want the young lady. That is great, Lubega. The end of my life, great Lubega. I know how to attract. I'm not going to make them weird. You understand what I'm saying? So, Duncan. Duncan. Makes a meeting for T.L. Osborne. Hello, yeah, who are you? T.L. Osborne. T.L. Osborne, right? T.L. Osborne. After that, he writes in a small. Say, Joy, you're going to run. Type and paste. Benson in Dahosa made me a very nice meeting in Ghana. Because when Benson in Dahosa, he catch your name on a bear, bear or gun. Duncan William Hardy. Duncan William Hardy. Duncan William, say with you. He wrote a letter. Say show your barrow. To T. L. Osborne. But T. L. Osborne. Tell him excuse me, father. Me go and see my bear. I am the one who did the meeting. I am not your hero, your hero. Not my father in Dahosa. Say Papa in Dahosa. T. L. Osborne gets the letter. T. L. Osborne, tell him my barrow. He sends it to Dahosa. Without commenting, Idahosa read it. Idahosa take one. He told them, "Tell Duncan to come now." Because Duncan been coming, Kiawani. How do you tell a whole bishop? He rubu ko be bishop come to come now. Been coming, Kiawani. Papere. Father, when your father says come, no, you, come, papi, come, you forget your apostle. No, 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 listen. Come, come, listen, come, pastor. Come, come, when your father calls you, come, papi, you forget that you're a prophet. We, we look on the that you're in a 40 day fast. <laughs> your father called you. Papi, you Duncan refused. Duncan, take care of He said no. This man is. He said something else. No, He's even now talking to me too. You look it on. Do what he wants now. Let him go and tell me to pay. I don't, I'm not, I'm going to continue what I'm doing. Pay at him, pay what? Second time. Mario. Benson tells him, come. Say the cop and he been come. Then someone, he refuses. Say or dance a square. That time he got two guys. Mario, they get to order. Put them on a flight from America. Yeah, America. And sent them to this man. Say or, you bought down him. Papa sent us. Me papa or, when you be home. He said, no. Say cop, be power. Tell him I will come on my time. Cop, be on a bini, chow, on a na yiho. When they told him the hosa. He carmo, cop, be the hosa. He said it's okay. Let's come in the bar. Since he grieves his cover. It's the end of one year. For a moment, I will take my cover off. Me and another people. For a moment. Whom I come again and whom I get. In just in about two weeks. Young and the kid is happy or young. A strange case happened. Go for the old don't you care about? And Duncan William was in court. Duncan William was in court. Nobody knows why it came from. One thing after another. The government is going to arrest him. The government is going to lose his ministry. In just days, he stopped to profit when he touched his head. And they don't work. His prayer partner came to him. He told him, my brother. When I look at how you're going to prison, I can only conclude you touched your head. Duncan William gets his first flight. Duncan William, they what the day came out of Guinea. America. They what America? Falls on the feet of the Lord. They what it? They were red. They pinned it. The security wanted to thrust him away. You are making a coup. You are making a coup. You He held on his legs. They mark up the enemy. Come in. They told him, go away. The devil has come between me and my son. Man, don't tell me our war brother cannot be with us. He told him, you are wrong to claim glory. Over my instructions. Never do it again. Go back, I've forgiven you. Even the case on you, I've cancelled it. Duncan cleaned his eyes. Duncan, tell where you pick one. Thank you, Father. I went back to Ghana. The next week, the police called him. To make appearance. He used to make appearance every week. Maybe he would come. You take come again. They call him Bishop Duncan. They call Bishop Duncan. How come you have not come to report to police? A man didn't pay bill to police thing. He told them I'm not coming. Go and pay a bill. My father, forgive me. Papa, see my sister. Papa, see my sister.
they cancelled the case. Yo tengo lo que esa no hará. And set him free. Usted ve que como goña. That is the power. Mono pero. Of having a head. No pero que le vi. Over your life. Some of you young men, the things you're looking for on mountain. Yo que le va. Tiki que moque tiki ni ya tira cuar. Some men have in their hands. Yo que le tiki le chingi. It is not humility that took you on that mountain. Pero you know na you tira que le vi gata. It was pride. You refuse the hand of your father. And you want to find God on the mountain. You, you come back burning from the mountain. And more confused than you came back. And without fees. For your children. Yet you are on prayer mountain. Drop your pride. No man watches over themselves. No man accounts to God directly. Every man must have a head over there. That is the principle. Read. They watch over your souls and guard your spiritual warfare. Welfare. But I'm a prophet. Yes, this must be a prophet. You end somewhere. He's the one who will see the devil attacking you. Peter, I've seen the devil sift you like me. But I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you that your faith fails in order. And when thou art converted, he told him, restore your own brethren. That is what preserves. Even Paul, when he received the revelation of Arabia, the Bible says he went and submitted it to Peter and James. Even the message we preach, before I came to Lira, I sat Bishop Tom down. Like Galatians 2 to say, I communicated to them which were of reputation. Yes, I ran my race in vain. And I told him, I'm the vice man of God, and I told him, if there is anything you see with my doctrine, I'm a son, correct? Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. I'm big. I'm big. I'm so big. I'm so big. But I understand authority. Many of you, your churches are frustrated. Either you grieved your father. Or you don't know your father. Or you don't even have a father. We can't have a generation that is fatherless. We can only produce prodigal sons. How can we have generations where we can't see three days, three generational anointing? Do you know many men in Uganda right now, if they died, Many of them don't have people to sit in their shoes. Many of them. Because the sons in the ministry are not Elijah and Elisha. They don't forsake their cattle and kill them and leave their own household to serve men. They are political affiliates who appear to be sons. You can't submit under a man and he doesn't reproduce himself in you. Not possible. That's why when you serve Vishwa, you're serving. You're not just being a political woman. Your man of God must feel that you love him unconditionally. He must feel the confirmation in his spirit that you take a bullet for him. That you look away and love him until God perfects everything that is around you. But our boys are very patient. Our men are very impatient. 
I want you to pray in your own as a father to son. As a son to a father. As a brother to a man. I want you to talk to God and tell him God. Where, where God wrong? Where God wrong? When you bow, we repent. Where we misunderstood if this should cost my ministry. So they I I'm willing to do what is right. Because I prefer to serve you above anything around me. Tell him God help Uganda. Somebody raise your voice and speak in other words. If you're wounded and you're here, forgive. If you've been wounded, forgive. Since you're the one who was wounded, make peace. Come on, somebody speak to God. This is bigger than you. It is for our nation. It is for our history. If it's for our legacy. Our prosperity. Our sons. And our daughters. Our men and women. We can't continue fighting. We can't continue hating. We can't continue building. Things that can break. We can't continue speaking evil against each other. We can't. We can't. God, we are not losing another child. We are not losing another father. We are not losing another son. Sabakata, Sariba, 
God help us. We cannot reap what we cannot sow. You are entrusting us with a generation. We must be faithful. Jacob served Laban. Because you trusted him with 12 tribes. The character to father 12 tribes was only made when he served a man. Eli was served by Samuel. Elisha was served. I mean, Elisha was served by Elisha. Paul served James and Peter. Timothy served Paul. God may we serve. May we serve. Joshua served Moses. God may we serve. Jonathan served David. God may we serve. Forgive the God Father. And forgive us the Son. Timuakisha one word. We repent. Warumur, help us. Konywa, help us. Konywa, for the sake of the responsibility. Be teacher, may me wa. You've given us. I may me wa. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody give the Lord a miracle. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus.